As we move through these challenging times, we have witnessed the power of music uplift us. A quarantined Italian tenor singing from his balcony, or D Nice on the ones and twos hosting Club Quarantine, a global dance party. And artists coming together worldwide to create a virtual concert. Even right here on this show, we've had Lionel Richie, Cheryl Crow, Dave Matthews, and Christy Hyde all sharing their gifts and their talents from their homes, bringing joy to people, even if just a moment. You know, music can sometimes be the best medicine for healing the soul. Good morning, I'm Leah McGowan Hare and welcome to another one of our live weekly conversations as part of our Leading Through Change series. A chance for you to hear from business leaders how they are moving through and doing their best through this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, before I turn it over to today's amazing host, Salesforce CEO, Mark Benioff, I wanna preview the next 30 minutes, half an hour. Mark will be interviewing Lars Ulrich to discuss how Lars and the band are engaging with their fans and how companies can stay connected with their customers and even build a stronger connection. And after the conversation, Lars has a special treat for you all, something that he's pre-recorded and I'm super excited to see. Now, today we're also raising money for Metallica's charitable foundation, All Within Our Hands. Now, they've been raising funds and giving grants to COVID-19 relief organizations, such as Feeding America uh, and Direct Relief. Now, you too can donate to All Within Our Hands by going to allwithinourhands.org. And Salesforce will be matching donations up till May 1st, up to $100,000. So get in there and donate today. With that, I want to turn it over to you, Mark. Well, thanks so much, Leah. It's great to be uh, with you and um, and uh, to be here on Leading with Change. Just want to congratulate you on behalf of the company on the tremendous uh, leadership you and the entire marketing team have uh, provided over the last several months. And uh, this program is certainly a great example of it. Millions, I think tons of millions actually, of people have had the opportunity to receive incredible content from you that has been so valuable and to provide such critical guidance, vision, insights, and inspirations during this time. So thank you, Leah, and your entire team for everything that you have been doing. We are truly grateful. And certainly it has been a difficult time for everybody. And to have uh, this program every Tuesday morning at uh, 10 o'clock has been uh, fantastic. And um, I'm uh, thankful. So please uh, let your entire team know. So now I'd like to uh, talk about today's program. We're so thrilled that we have the ability to uh, bring on a, a good friend of mine who's actually not too far away uh, from me here in what uh, he affectionately refers to as the 415. If you don't know what the 415 is, it's the <laughs> zip code. It's the zip code here in San Francisco. And uh, the area code, the area code, the area code. San Francisco, the area code. And um, uh, he likes to talk about that. Well, he could be all over the world, and he's talking about how he's looking forward to getting back to the 415. And um, uh, we both have a, a lot of love for San Francisco, and uh, we're also close friends. So it's really my honor to be able to talk with uh, Lars Ulrich today, who uh, many years ago, I think it was 1982. I, I think that you started Metallica. Is that right? Is that the right founding date for the band? Yeah, it's uh, it's about uh, about 300 years ago, more or less. Uh, 81, 82, down in um, in Southern California. I won't name the city by name, but uh, now we are, as you affectionately say, in the 415, and Metallica has called San Francisco and and the Greater Bay Area home for uh, just about 37 years now. And um, it's a beautiful day here in, in Northern California. And both of us have our black hats on. So uh, let's talk uh, connecting with our fans and uh, let's talk um, all things. And by the way, I'd like to say congratulations on 
everything that uh, that that you're doing, and, and thank you for everything that you're doing on behalf of of not just everybody in 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 the greater Bay Area, but all over the world, and inspiring us. But also, uh, congratulations on that incredible uh, write up about your your efforts uh, in the New York Times this morning. Well, thank you, Lars. I I have to be honest with you, and I'll just start with you know a personal thought, which is that you know my heart really remains broken. Uh, it really remains broken because of everything that all of us are going through all over the world. And um, this is something unlike anything that I have ever been through. We've talked quite a few times. I know it's unlike anything you've ever gone through. And when I think about the huge tragedies uh, that are happening across the world, um, not just here in our 415 and not only just in our country, um, I just uh, uh, have nothing but as I said, a broken heart because uh, the loss of life, uh, people who have been severely injured as well by the virus, uh, families who have been impacted, um, not just biologically, but also financially. This is beyond anything that I could have ever imagined. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be living through a pandemic. And, um, you know, the way that I immediately think and pivot to is, well, what, what, should I, what should I be doing? How can I help other people? And what, what does that, what can I do for others? And of course, you know, as we talk about our Ohana, our employees at Salesforce and our customers, um, what can we do for our communities? And, um, you know, there's so few things that you seem like you can do. I feel quite helpless most days. And the one thing that we've found that we could do is provide personal protective equipment to doctors, to nurses, to uh, police, fire, other first responders. And we've been able to source about 60 million units of PPE all over the world and now deliver it to first responders and uh, to hospitals. A lot of it through the inspiration and motivation of UCSF, something that's so incredible here in San Francisco, our University of California, San Francisco, that you, Lars, have done so much and Metallica has done so much to support. And I'll tell you that uh, that has been uh, one of our main focuses. And, um, you know, I think about what are other things that we can do now uh, to help this uh, world uh, that's in tragedy. And I, and I know that you've been doing so much as well with All Within Our Hands Foundation and also your vision of what you can do. So. You know, I think everybody has to do something. Everybody has to do at least one thing to improve the world. When the world is in crisis and the world is in tragedy, we all have to reach out, reach out and, you know, our hearts have to open with compassion. And we have to realize, yes, one, you know, one day not so far from now, everything is going to be fine and all right. And tomorrow will be better. But what can we do today? for those who are suffering. So maybe you just like- Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. And, and thanks for sharing that, Mark. Uh, it's absolutely obviously devastating. And I think it, considering the fact that we're six weeks into this, uh, it's just mind boggling also how unprepared uh, the whole world has been for this. So that sense of urgency now and everybody's scrambling, trying to figure out how can they make a difference? How can I make a difference? How can we, as a collective and as a community make a difference. And I think everybody's trying, uh, you wake up every day with a, a little bit of, of, of just, what can I do today to have an impact with my, within my family, within my local community on a global basis? Obviously, uh, I, I think if you look at one positive thing that's come out of, of of the last six weeks is that there really feels, it feels like a sense of community that we're in touch with music fans and with Metallica fans all over the world. And it really feels like in some way, the world has just gotten a little bit smaller in the last six weeks. And, and when you can connect to each other and feel that we're all in this together, it just brings brings us all closer, the things that have separated us for the last few years, few decades, few centuries, you know, uh, seem to just matter slightly less in the last six weeks. And I think that uh, as we sit here and try to scramble with the, what does this mean? How do we deal with the psychological fallout 
of, of the last uh, six weeks. I think that one positive takeaway from this is that the world just seems to be shrinking a little bit and that we can put aside uh, our differences uh, and, and all everything that separated us for, for, for the last, uh, let's say, few centuries and just come together. And obviously the way that the world is connected through, uh, uh, through the internet, through media, the way tr uh, information travels so fast that there really is just for once a sense of, of one, one planet, one people, and everything else is secondary to that. Well, I agree. I think that that is one of the things that I certainly feel, which is unity. I, I feel unified, you know, in one humanity, that this virus, um, it doesn't discriminate. It goes after all races. It goes after all genders, all sexual orientations, all religions. It goes after everybody. Um, I think that, you know, when we look at that, if there's anything that this virus can show us, that this is one humanity and that we uh, must act as one humanity as well in resolving this and, and, uh, and stopping it and moving uh, into a new world. I think that the virus not just shows us one humanity, it also shows us other things as well. I think here in San Francisco, maybe the air has never been clearer. I don't know how you feel when you look outside your house. I'm looking out right now on the other side of the computer, I see blue skies. You and I both know that at this time of year, you know, most of the time it's foggy. There's a little bit of, of pollution out there. I mean, it seems like it's been blue skies. Maybe the skies are bluer outside, even because we we maybe can't spend as much time out there. But it definitely, obviously, people are talking all over the world about seeing the fish in the can canals of Venice or less air pollution in the bigger mega cities like Los Angeles and Mexico City. And so there are, you know, when you see the satellite images from space and see what certain parts of the world look like now compared to two, three months ago, it's just mind boggling the difference. So every day, I think, you know, within our family unit here, we talk at dinner, we talk about how did we make a difference mm -hmm. today? How can we inspire each other across the dining table to continue to make a difference? What are things that are turning us, um, turning us around and seeing a little bit more light at the end of the tunnel? What are something that we can uh, bring up as a topic of dinner conversation that's positive instead of, of the, the negative uh, that seems to be bombarding us uh, in the, in the, you know, every, every time I try to not watch a lot of television, I do uh, get most of my information from reading, but it seems that um, obviously there's just constant turning over of bad news, bad news and fear inducing statistics and all this type of stuff. So I encourage everybody all over the world to try to, you know, if, if you're a, uh, you know, at home with your family, just get conversations going about positives. What can the world look like on the other side of this? What can be better? What are the changes that we can make? What did we do something today that made a difference to just one person? Did we call and check in on somebody? Did we uh, Zoom or FaceTime somebody? And, and just how are you reach out, connect, connect, connect. Uh, on a side note, I would say that it, it's kind of, you know, for Metallica, the key word in what we've been doing for since the last record came out four years ago, I, I find myself using that word basically more and more in interviews all the time, which is we just want to connect with the fans. We want to connect with like-minded music lovers all over the world. We want to connect with each other inside the band. We want to connect with our families, our friends. And it seems that the world, the word connect really has become the go-to uh, sort of uh, just it, it's the word that 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 is the 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 takeaway from from everything that this pandemic has brought upon us how do we find ways to connect and engage with our loved ones and the people that uh, that that are like-minded like we are well i i completely agree with you i mean i think that i've never had so many emails and messages and and uh, connectivity from others, you know, uh, it's been overwhelming. I think that that's something that all of us need to be doing is going outbound. There's so many people who are in their homes and many of them alone that
that we all need to be reaching out more and connecting more. And to getting back more to your thoughts about the blue skies and clearer water and um, uh, less pollution in the world, it does feel like we're getting to have more of a harmony with the planet. And you know, not only do we have more of a unity, more not only are we connecting more with each other, but there seems to be uh, the opportunity to see harmony uh, on the planet between uh, us as humanity and the planet in a new way. That seems to be such a powerful thought that in this new normal, uh, somehow how can we continue this harmony uh, going forward? And also not just a new harmony in the planet, uh, but a balance that that also seems to feel like something that, you know, we're able to see what a level of balance could be between us and the planet in a way that we haven't seen. I mean, when I look at um, uh, even like Saturday Night Live, which I, you know, love, and on Saturday for the second time, I saw them do their Zoom show, and it was incredible, and uh, you had this great impression, I'm sure you saw it, of uh, oh. Dr. Fauci that Brad Pitt did. Of course, yeah. And then I was thinking, you know, what is the carbon footprint of this Saturday Night Live versus one from three months ago? And of course, they're very different. You know, they're, they're probably, uh, one is, is a lot less. And I think it kind of speaks to a level of harmony, a level of balance, a level of connect, like you're mentioning, a level of unity, all of these things. And so what can we be learning here and what could we be bringing forward um, into this new normal that we're about to go into or this great reset that has happened? Yeah, I think also, I mean, it, I, I totally share your, your, your thoughts on that. And I, I think it's a, it, 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 it's a great lesson right now to challenge ourselves for, uh, especially people in, in my community, in the creative community, how can we be creative uh, with a new paradigm. How can we be creative in our own homes? How can we be creative in ways where we don't rely on all the tools that we relied on in the last 50 or 100 years? I think that the idea that we all as artists and you guys as entrepreneurs and, and what you do in your world and, and anybody that has any kind of, uh, of connection to, to change, how can we now find new ways to uh, to be creative, to challenge ourselves, and to to do what we do and to get it out there. So I think the Saturday Night Live is a great example of that. And obviously, I think there are two shows in to it. Obviously, they're, they're doing great. And I think you know we've been sitting around in the last four to six weeks and having numerous conversations. We have a. I'll let you in on a little. Um, on, on a little, I don't know call it secret, but uh, uh, the four members of Metallica connect via Zoom uh, once a week. And uh, it's great to connect. Uh, all four of us are obviously in, in, in four different locations uh, in, in four different states right now. But um, the, the, you know, one topic of conversation on these weekly Zoom uh, calls is, uh, sessions is how can we, what does it look like going forward? what will the next couple of months look like? What will the rest of the year look like? And what will obviously say the next decade look like in terms of how do we create? How do we write music? How do we record music? How do we share music? And how, how is it all gonna look with the, the, the uncertainties ahead of us? I think for, for people like myself, for people in the band, for people in our organization, I know you and I have talked about this, uh, numerous times for people that are as uh, uh, we, 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 we can get very comfortable with knowing everything that's in front of us. We know, you know, and you, you and I have talked about this. I could pretty much walk you through what the rest of my 2020 looked like. I could start walking you through what my 2021 looked like. We, we plan everything years ahead. We know where we're going to be. Our calendars and our iPhones are full of all these appointments and all these places we have to travel and so on. And I think it's a great lesson for people like ourselves who like to steer and be on top and control every element of our existence that all of a sudden we're sitting here now for the first time in, in, in memory, not knowing 
what does the rest of, of 2020 look like? Well, we have all our makeup dates. Uh, we were supposed to be, I was supposed to be in Brazil this week and playing shows uh, all over Latin America. They've all been moved to the fall. We were supposed to play festivals all over North America in May. They've all been moved. Uh, but now some of those ones that have been moved to September and October, one of them was canceled last week in Kentucky. And I'll have to say, as you and I sit here, I don't know what the rest of of those rescheduled dates will look like. I hope, obviously, uh, that we can come out and play and that we can connect and we can bring people together, uh, you know, in, in, in these situations through music. But you and I both know, and everybody uh, listening in and watching know that there's a significant chance that none of those dates are going to happen because the idea of bringing tens of thousands of people together in concert settings is maybe just not the right idea for the health and safety of everybody in 2020. So the fact that we once again find ourselves in situations where we don't exactly know what the next six months or the next year of our lives look like, I think is a very, very valuable uh, lesson where we have to kind of surrender to the moment and, and like I said, the guys in Metallica, as we sit here and go, well, maybe in a, in a, in a month or two from now, uh, is there a chance that the four of us can be together, maybe at our studio here in Northern California, if, if the quarantine and the stay at home orders uh, the, the subside, so on and so forth. So, you know, right now, you know, as everybody who has a, a creative juices flowing through their blood, through, through their veins, you know, they're being challenged to try to come up with new ways to be creative. And I think that uh, those are wonderful takeaways from the, the devastation that's happening all over the world at the moment. Well, let me ask you, you know, um, when we talk about the Great Reset, we talk about these new values that we, we see, whether it's unity or um, uh, balance or harmony or connect. Um, you know, all these positive actions that you're taking in the way that you're connecting with your band in a new way on Zoom uh, weekly basis. What, what things do you see taking forward? You know, at some point, like I said, tomorrow will be better and we will have a brighter day again. And that, that day is not very far from now. So tell me, you know, when we get back to the, another, a new world, yeah. Um, the great reset has happened. We're in a new normal. What will you take with you from this moment? Well, I, I would, I would take a lot of things. I mean, we sit around at, at the dinner table, uh, my wife, Jess and, and the boys, and, and, and we talk about how crazy it is to be quarantined and, and how, you know, we're going stir crazy, but we always, flip that conversation around in 10 seconds go in some way we'll miss the closeness we'll miss the intimacy we'll miss the the you know using the word connection again that we've made as a family i don't think as a family we've ever been closer than we have been in the last six weeks to be able to have you know the the two older boys are at nyu to have them home uh, unexpectedly for six weeks and and to be doing their uh, virtual classes uh, from their bedrooms and and you know so as a family just that in itself uh, is such a treasure to be able to uh, to really sit here and every day and 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 reconnect with your kid you know in my case 21 year old and 18 who are, who are back from the east coast so i think that as we move forward you know we'll look back on the great reset as you're saying with um I think a lot of mixed emotions. I think that uh, I kind of, to be honest with you, enjoy, and I know the people around me <laughs> in the Metallica organization, uh, you know, appreciate the fact that I'm sitting down <laughs> and that I'm uh, uh, not on the phone 12 hours a day trying to figure out what we're going to do in 2023 and and so on and so forth. And so I the 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 sort of the forced just slowing down your breathing connecting with your surroundings, I think is a great thing. Everywhere in the world of, of not just music, but in the world of anything, entertainment, obviously film, theater, art, anything that has to do with creativity, I can guarantee you there are thousands uh, of conversations right now. How do we make records? How do we uh, make uh, 
the filmed entertainment? How do we make art? How do we share it with this new paradigm that's happening? And what can it look like on the other side of, of, of the new normal? And, you know, even if you bring it into our world, uh, the people that make all the software and, and all the stuff that we use, use to record are sitting right now trying to figure out how Lars and James and Kirk and Rob can make a Metallica record from four different locations in four different states. And that's something that we're obviously circling, very excited about. So I-, I Is that gonna happen? Are we gonna see a new Metallica album appear from your homes? Uh, well, again, uh, a lot of that will obviously have to do with how long the stay, in, stay at home orders stay in place. A lot of that will have to do with if there's a second wave of the virus, who knows? just like we talked about, who knows what, what our, our world will look like six months from now. But obviously, uh, the one thing that you can depend on with creative people, for better or worse, is that they can't sit still for very long. And I can tell you that on these weekly uh, Metallica Zoom sessions, we are talking about how we can just be a band again. Not, not I mean, and then there are many different phases to being in a band, um, but the the most basic one and certainly where it started 37 years ago is to just have four guys play music together. The fact that it ends up being shared all over the world and connected with millions of people, that's much later and, and a whole different thing, but at its core essence uh, is just four guys in a room or connected via Zoom, the Zoom room. Uh, you know, making music together. And I can tell you that all four of us are uh, are, are, are really excited about what, what that could look like. So will there be a, a Metallica, Metallica quarantine record? I can't tell you because uh, again, I don't know how long the quarantine will last, but if you and I and, and the rest of the world are still sitting here six months from now, a year from now, I'd say there's a very good chance. Well, that would be exciting to uh, see, you know, what you guys uh, could do from your home. I mean, I think music and concerts from your home. We've seen artists uh, like yeah. you, incredible yeah. people. I, I can tell you, I can tell you one thing. Sorry to cut you off. That uh, you know, again, trying to find the lighter moments occasionally. Uh, uh, you know, as we've been touring the world for thirty-five plus years now, and it still is is it what fuels us. But as you sit and look into into your future and, and, and as you sit and still are inspired by artists like Neil Young and the Rolling Stones and you know the, the Black Sabbaths and Paul McCartney's of the world who are touring well into their 70s. You know, we always we sort of would jokingly sit there occasionally, well, you know, if we get too beat up to travel or too old to travel or whatever, maybe there's some version where we can be in San Francisco, we can be in our homes and there can be, you know, a concert or a, a, an audience that comes to us. So uh, obviously in, 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 a, in a strange way, be careful what you wish for, but that may, may someday, uh, that may be accelerated now that that train of thought. So we'll see. So you could see a Metallica concert from, uh the four of your homes, as well as a new album. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, like I said, obviously in, in your uh, technology world right now, lots of people are sitting trying to figure out, you know, the software solutions to these things and to try to figure out how to make that happen. But in the, in the great uh, uh, event that was put together by uh, my friend Hugh at Global Citizen and Lady Gaga, a week or two ago where the Rolling Stones were playing as a band. There are obviously some practical, if you're a, a solo artist, uh, one, uh, you know, one, one person, one voice, one guitar, it, it, it can be practically easier to share your, your, your art with the world. But when you are in a band and, and so much of us, so many of us love that still that, that, that band mentality, being in a, in a band, being in a collective, being, that safety and numbers thing. So obviously, as you saw with the Rolling Stones uh, on the Global Citizen uh, uh, event a week ago, there are ways to do this. Uh, I think that the ways will continue to improve. And I'm sure somewhere right now, uh, some of your colleagues uh, in the technology world are figuring out how to, to make that uh, happen in a way that, that will be a new and exciting and, 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 and we'll, we'll just work for, for everybody involved. 
Well, I know that people like me, you know, and, and your fans around the world would love to have a, a you know, live a Metallica concert from your homes and also a, a quarantine album that sounds amazing. I <laughs> wanted to ask you, you know, we've been talking uh, uh, when we're not here, but just as friends, a lot about Denmark and it looks like Denmark is opening. They won't let U.S. citizens in right now uh, for obvious reasons. So um, we're not, you're not going to be going home anytime uh, soon. Well, hang on. I, I, oh, I, still have, right. I still have my Danish passport. Oh, you still have? Well, hopefully I, they'll I, let you in. I sleep with it under my pillow every night. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Denmark, obviously, uh, Denmark was one of the first countries uh, in anywhere in the world to actually uh, go into complete shutdown. And uh, they've uh, registered the lowest uh, case numbers in, uh, in all of Western Europe, uh, just about uh, it's about a week and a half ago now they started opening up uh, daycare and kindergartens and schools and so far it's going well uh, mm -hmm. it's still early uh, in that curve uh, and obviously I think what we have to remember no matter where we are uh, as the world as, as the world opens up again, the way the world shut down in one or two days or in a week, it's not gonna be the same opening. So it'll be a very gradual opening. Uh, as we can see, even in the United States, there are places that are starting to open in Europe, in Asia and so on. So every country that will have their own set of aesthetics and their own ways of, of getting back to the new normal. But uh, in Denmark, uh, which I follow on a daily basis and read the Danish newspapers and and talk and, and communicate with my friends in Denmark. They have started now, and I think they're off to uh, they're off to a, a promising start. And uh, you know the numbers and the statistics and all that haven't radically changed. Actually, they continue to go down. So, as you know, uh, what happened in, in some Asian countries uh, when they uh, started uh, softening up uh, some of the stay-at-home orders, uh, the case numbers went up. But in Denmark, so far, it, it looks uh, it looks promising. So uh, that Danish passport is close by in case it's needed. <laughs> and you might be able to ask to get a friend in too, if needed, because I'm going to need a haircut pretty soon. By the way, <laughs> yes, our uh, our great uh, our, our our great uh, Crown Prince Frederick uh, uh, went out the very first day, uh, who will be king um, at some point. Uh, uh, he uh, went out the very first day that uh, that uh, the stay-at-home orders were lifted and got himself a haircut that went uh, virtual all over the world. I believe uh, I saw in many different news outlets a before and after picture. And so I think that um, both him and the rest of the 5 million people in Denmark uh, exemplify, uh, you know, when I think of Denmark, I just think of the word we everything in Denmark is always we and us and 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 less about I and me and so when I, I think of what Denmark has done uh, through this crisis I'm very proud to call myself a Dane and um, and I think that uh, the progress that's being made there is certainly uh, encouraging and inspiring for the rest of us thank you for taking the time with us this morning with leading with change and thank you Leah for everything that you have done we're so grateful to you can I just thank uh, everybody at Salesforce and everybody in, in, in your incredible company for, um, and Alex and everybody else at all, uh, friends of ours for supporting Metallica. Thank you for that. And I also wanna thank you guys for uh, matching uh, the All Within My Hands donations and, and, and what you guys are doing. Uh, we've been doing a, a lot of things with our foundation in obviously in the last couple of months and so many different organizations out there uh, need help. And we work, have been working prim primarily with, with Hunger with Feeding America. And we're also working with our partner, Michael Rapino's uh, company, Live Nation. They have Crew Nation set up, which takes care of all the stage hands and all the, the, the second tier uh, people that don't get a lot of uh, shout outs and that are often overlooked, the, the stage hands and, and all the, the people that really keep the concert industry uh, rolling every day, the people that load and unload trucks and everybody that's out there putting together rock shows all over the world and kind of the unsung, un, unsung heroes 
of the concert industry. So there's a, a foundation called Crew Nation, uh, an organization called Crew Nation that we've been supporting. And I encourage everybody else. I know these are difficult times and we don't ask anybody, uh, but if anybody has anything that they can share, then a Crew Nation, uh, Feeding America, uh, Direct Relief. And obviously we've also uh, been helping out uh, an organization called the U.S. Bartenders Guild uh, Foundation. So many unemployed people in the service business. So uh, we're trying to make a difference with uh, our All Within My Hands Foundation. And, uh, you know, it, it, I think it's important uh, just to remind people that, you know, and to all the Metallica fans out there that the reason this uh, charity organization exists is because we donate uh, $2 from every concert tickets that we've sold in the last three years. And so it really is because of the Metallica fans that we can write these checks uh, and, and make uh, a difference uh, and encourage music fans and certainly hard rock fans and Metallica fans to join whenever, whenever we can. So we're uh, very active with um, our, uh, our foundation. And once again, Mark, we appreciate uh, everything that Salesforce is doing in matching uh, all the checks that, uh, that we're writing. So thank you so much. Well, we're grateful to be associated with you, uh, Lars. You know, we um, uh, believe so strongly in uh, your values and the philanthropic values of Metallica. We have some of that as well. We've also taken a 90-day no layoff pledge here at Salesforce to give our all of our employees the stability they need during times uh, like this. And um, we've also made the commitment to pay all of our hourly workers as well uh, around the world um, who are so important to keeping all of Salesforce are rolling. And I, I know I have, and you have also continuing to pay our own hourly workers who support our families and, and households. And I think that that is such an important thought right now as we all try to look out at what can we do to help each other. And uh, that, that's a critical part. You know, we talked about, obviously Salesforce has made a major um, effort and commitment to a uh, source of uh, the PPE. We've also done, I think, almost 6,000 emergency implementations of Salesforce in the last 90 days to help organizations all over the world um, uh, with their completely unexpected information management needs, um, which has varied from the analytics that you see in the, the state of New York and the governor's office or on the, um, the uh, California, public California website to here, even in California here in an emergency database of supplies uh, for the state, um, that uh, there's so much that has been done in the last three months that we could never have uh, expected. And, um, you know, I think that we all have to be looking out for others right now. This, this is a moment in time when we do need to have more compassion. We, we have to find more, you know, we have to find more unity uh, with with each other, um, we've talked about that, that that idea that we're connecting more, that we're going to find um, more harmony with the planet. I mean, these are like some of the takeaways, um, not just from our conversation, but um, you know, over the last few months. And of course, I don't think any of us will ever forget what we're going through. And you know, tomorrow will be a brighter day. But there's a lot to learn right now. And hopefully we'll be able to take some of these positive uh, lessons uh, for us. And I'm also looking forward to the uh, the um, new live Metallica concert on Zoom. Right, that sounds really good. And the, and the quarantine album. Let's uh, if we if we can find a way to make it happen, we absolutely will. We're um, proud, obviously, of the fact that we have um, uh, the best producers and engineers on our team and. Uh, everybody in, in certainly that specific niche of the software uh, industry is right now trying to figure out how to come up with the tools so these types of things can happen. And so bands like ourselves uh, can really connect with a worldwide audience, maybe from four different places, you know, where the band is located right now. So It's very cool. But, uh, you know, Again, I'm going to end how I uh, started, which is, you know, my, my uh, heart goes out to everybody who is uh, going through difficulty at times like uh, this. And um, um, everyone will, will certainly remain in our thoughts, especially those who have lost a loved one or those who have uh, suffered an injury uh, in their family from the virus or going through some type of economic uh, 
hardship. Uh, I hope that organizations like Salesforce and Metallica will continue to uh, their commitment to improve the state of the world and um, to be examples of others. So thank you, Lars Ulrich, for being with us. Okay. May, may, I, may, I just, may I just thank uh, all the Metallica fans out there who have been uh, the spirit of the Metallica community in the last uh, two, three months has just been, uh, it, it makes me emotional and, and it, it's just, it's crazy just seeing everybody step up, contribute. Uh, we do these every Monday, we share a concert, uh, a stream of concert on YouTube and Facebook all over the world and, and people tune in and they even donate uh, to our foundation, even though we're not encouraging, we're not expecting it. it we don't even want money to be a part of any of this stuff but people still donate we've raised over fifty thousand dollars just from uh the donations to these metallica monday uh streaming of, of concerts on on across youtube and facebook and it's unexpected uh, but it's so appreciated and it makes me so proud to uh to say that i'm a part of of not just the music community but uh you know the metallica community and all the Metallica fans out there, thank you for your support on behalf of the rest of the band members and uh, the whole Metallica organization. Uh, we hope you're all safe and sound and we hope uh, your loved ones and your families and your friends and your communities and your neighborhoods are safe and sound wherever on this beautiful planet you are. We will come and visit you at some point. We will have new music. If not, you will come visit us through the magic of everything that I'm looking at right now. We will connect again, uh, but thank you so much for your perseverance and thank you uh, for, for the honor of letting uh, Metallica make a difference in your lives and in your, in your struggles through, through what, uh, you know, what, what all of us are going through. And uh, much love to all of you out there. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mark. And thank you to everybody at Salesforce for having me today. Well, thank you, Lars. And uh, much love back to you and to your family and all of our Ohana uh, throughout uh, Salesforce as well. Um, uh, from San Francisco, we want to send you um, uh, the very best for uh, healing, for uh, protection, for wellness, and uh, peace. And back to you, Leah. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lars. Thank you for your leadership, both of you, through these very challenging times. And this is a big gratitude coming from the 510, how to represent 510 as well, uh, to all of you uh, out there. Thank you for joining us today. And you can find more of our Leading Through Change stories at salesforce.com slash blog. And finally, one more reminder, please, Support Metallica's charitable foundation, All Within My Hands. You can go to allwithinmyhands.org and through May 1st, Salesforce will be matching donations up to $100,000. And I expect to see you all back here next Tuesday, May 5th. Bring a friend, bring a family member. And until then, please take care of yourself and each other.